This is Class 1 Daycare, written by T and Tumblr, rating general audiences. Recorded by Star 1412. Summary. Aizawa is a somewhat reluctant daycare teacher. After this class, he's even more reluctant. Aizawa had been working at Little Heroes for over five years now. He still doesn't know how he got the job. He was dragged along by Namuri one day and got employed and simply hadn't left. It's not bad, really. He is set hours every day, gets weekends off, and works with the oldest children. Sure, there's more of them to deal with, but they're also old enough to feed themselves, dress themselves, and use the toilet. Aizawa would have quit if he'd been put on nappy duty. He wouldn't. He's done it plenty of times before when covering other staff. But that's what he says. The main reason he's in the oldest room, though, is that his room, Sidekicks, has the age bracket where, statistically, most people get their quirk. Putting him in there makes sense. If a child's quirk comes in and is rampantly out of control, he can shut it off. He can also shut down arguments which escalate. Two five-year-olds fighting is bad enough. Two with the ability to blast each other through doors is worse. And so, Aizawa has the five-year-olds. This year's class is shaping up to be an interesting group. Aizawa's already seen most of them come through little heroes from younger ages, but there are a few new ones. There's Toru, who's invisible, great, and Rikido, who has the best quirk because Aizawa is never giving these gremlins sugar. A little girl called Ochako also joins, and Izuku goes from just one day a week to four. He's a timid little thing and jumps every time Katsuki arrives, but also hugs him too. Their relationship, Aizawa thinks, is summed up by something Midori Inko had said to him on Izuku's first day at Sidekicks. Izuku is a little shy, but he has Katsuki, so he'll be fine. Oh, and I... I've also put Izuku in only four days to uh, give him a break from Katsuki. So there's that. But right now, Aizawa is in the middle of story time. Miss Sayumi setting up the children's nap time mattresses when Katsuki suddenly whirls around and, and punches Denki right in the face. The little blonde boy starts crying, and Ijiro and Izuku are scrambling for Katsuki, latching onto his arms. Mr. Zawa, Mr. Zawa, he hit him, Tenya cries, already on his feet and waving his arms. Katsuki hit Denki, I saw it. We all saw it, Aizawa said firmly, everyone shrinking down at his tone. He waves Denki over, the boy sniveling as he climbs into his lap. Katsuki, do you have something to say to Denki? No, Katsuki spits, folding his arms tightly. Denki only cries louder, Aizawa wincing. Katsuki. He zapped me first, Katsuki argues. You said no quirks at kindy. It was an accident, Denki wails, but it has Aizawa sighing. All right, Katsuki. But, he adds sternly, you do not hit your friends. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Aizawa, he grumbles, plopping back into his spot. But I didn't explode him. That, that is true, and it's an improvement from week one. He had been planning to speak to Katsuki's parents, but with that revelation, Aizawa decides not to. Katsuki's trying, and he's five, so yeah. Aizawa's seen actual pro heroes with less restraint. All right, Denki, that's enough, he says, wiping away his tears and inspecting his face. There's no mark, but did you want to get an ice pack? Ice packs cure everything, and this is no exception. Denki nods with almost excitement, scurrying to the fridge and pulling it open. Minutes later, he's back on the mat, ice pack pressed to his face like a badge of honor. Ijiro and Hanta look at him in something akin to jealousy, Aizawa rolling his eyes. Kids these days. A few weeks later, and the kids have been let loose for activity time, a group of girls have crowded around the art table, another bunch of boys building in construction corner. Izuku has tucked himself away in book corner, and Shoto sits a little way away, sorting through the alphabet letters. As always heading Shoto's way, the kid's a bit too quiet for his liking, when a loud smash comes from the other side of the room. Izuku's head snaps around, as does the rest of the classes. Aizawa orders them all to stay exactly where they are, recognizing the sound of broken glass. When he gets to the art table, he finds Momo hunched down in a corner, bottom lip trembling as tears stream down her face. Ochako and Mina are looking guiltily at the floor, and Aizawa spots Yuga hiding under the table. The table and floor are covered in glass shards, and even more painfully, glitter. Eyeing up the glitter, Aizawa raises an eyebrow because he did not have that much this morning. 
Momo? She shrinks down lower. You you could ask for more glitter to twinkle, and, and my friends wanted some too, so I... I... Aizawa crouches down, surveying the mess. You made more glitter and jars for your friends. She nods, to you speaking up from near the art drying rack. I was holding the glasses, she admits. I... I dropped them. Sorry, Mr. Aizawa. He sighs, asking them all to stay before picking them up one by one and dropping them outside the blast radius, for want of a better word. The glass is cleaned up quickly enough, but there's still glitter everywhere. He reaches into the cupboard under the sink and finds three dustpans. He passes them out before speaking to them, though not unkindly. It's okay to do nice things for your friends, Momo, but next time ask for a teacher. We'll be happy to supervise. Now, do you think you should all clean up this mess? They nod and quickly set to work. They then start bickering over who's cleaning up the most glitter the fastest, and when Aizawa turns back to the letter table, Shoto is gone. I'm fine, Aizawa insists, for what has to be the hundredth time. Yeah, you're really not, Nemuri sorts, taking in his ragged appearance. You've got the seasonal flu all the kids are getting. Just go home. He waves a hand. My kids are fine, and I'll be able to handle them. Nemuri rolls her eyes. Look, all I'm saying is, if you start to feel worse, just tell someone. I'm sure we'll be able to cover for you. Aizawa nods, but has no real intention of following through with it. Tomorrow is the weekend, and he can sleep through two days straight if he wants. He just has to get through today, and he'll be fine. And as he'd said, his kids are fine. They're well ingrained into his routine by now, and some of them have even learned to read the clock. They all know when their meal times are, and when it's time to pack up. Collecting his kids from outside, they're barely done washing their hands when Izuku tugs on his hand. Mr. Aizawa, are you okay? Are you sick? No, Izuku, he assures, ruffling the kid's hair. You look sick, Katsuki scoffs, but offers no sympathy. He just grabs Ijiro's hand and pulls him over to the new indoor cubby house they'd been given yesterday. Do you need water? Tanya asks. Mother says always to drink water or tea if you're unwell. I'm fine, Aizawa repeats, Misayumi laughing. When he glares at her, she just shrugs and helps Kyoko with the buckles on her overalls. Maybe he never says it out loud, but his children seem to know when something's wrong with him. They don't come up with niggling questions all morning, and the noise in the room seems to be kept to a minimum. Mina doesn't even throw a tantrum when Dark Shadow steals her Play-Doh. Fumikage is quick to snatch it away and hand it back, apologizing. When it comes to lunch, there's no yelling about so-and-so grabbing three pieces of cucumber instead of two, and no one banging the drink bottles against the table. There's the usual chatter that dissolves into yelling simply out of a desire to be heard, but it's nothing Aizawa can't handle. He asks them twice to settle down, and they do so, and then it's nap time. Hanta and Denki whine, as always, Katsuki kicking their pillows as he goes past before settling into his usual spot under the fan. Izuku takes his usual corner, curling up with an All Might plushie and closing his eyes before anyone even has to ask. Koji shifts his mattress closer to the window in a way that he thinks is secretly. Aizawa knows it's to talk to the birds, but feigns ignorance. He sits in his chair and starts to fill out what they did today and what activities he has planned for tomorrow. With the soft music and the lights off, it's nice. It's so nice, in fact, that he doesn't even remember falling asleep. He does, however, start awake at a hand shaking him. Mr. Zawa! Mr. Zawa! It's time to wake up! Aizawa shoots upright, noticing for the first time that there's a pillow under his head and a blanket haphazardly thrown over him. Tenya is shaking him with wide eyes. You fell asleep, but you need to... Shut up! Katsuki hisses from across the room. And get back to your bed before Miss Ayumi comes back. Tenya puffs his chest out indignantly at being told to shut up, but he bolts back to his bed, throwing himself under his blankets. Glancing at the time, Aizawa realizes he has exactly one minute until his colleague comes back from her lunch break and covers his own. He looks to Katsuki, who's very much looking away. Thank you, Katsuki, he calls, if only to rile the kid. He gets a huff, but that's all. Sometimes, just sometimes, he loves his kids. Shoto doesn't cry. It's a warning sign if Aizawa has ever seen one. All the other children in his class cry. Some children, like Izuku, Denki, and Mina, cry a little too much. But even the toughest children, like Katsuki and Mezo, cry from time to time. 
Whether it's because they've injured themselves or they're frustrated at something, Shoto doesn't. In six months, Aizawa has never seen him cry. The only time he shows even a shred of emotion is when his mother drops him off in the morning. Sometimes, very, very occasionally, he clings to her pants or skirt and has to be passed over to Aizawa. Most days he doesn't even do that, just waves shortly and sits himself somewhere on his own. The other children avoid him, and Shoto doesn't seem to mind. In fact, he shies away when they try. He has a quirk, Aizawa knows that, but as to what it is, he has no clue. He must have exceptional control. All the kids in his class have slipped up, but not Shoto. Which is why today takes him so off guard, because he's quizzing the children on their letters when Shoto stands up and walks himself to Aizawa's side. He then holds out his arms, asking to be picked up. Aizawa is reaching for him instantly, shooting a look at Tenya, who is already raising him to his knees, hand-waving madly. Shoto is a little sad today, he says firmly, thereby excusing his naughtiness at getting up during group time. But Shoto's never sad, Tsuyu pipes up. It's okay to be sad, Izuku interjects before Aizawa can. You can have all sorts of feelings, you just can't let your feelings make you hurt people. Very good, Izuku, Aizawa praises, watching the kid blush and hide his face behind his knees. He tucks Shoto closer, smoothing down his hair before drawing another letter on the board. This? D for Deku! Katsuki crows. Aizawa doesn't know what that means, but Izuku does, sinking lower still and seeming to force back tears. And then Ochako is flinging herself over Toru and Mashiro to poke a finger in Katsuki's face. Don't say that, it's mean! Katsuki just pokes his tongue out. Still true, Deku doesn't have a quirk and that's what makes him a Deku. Several gasps fill the room and Izuku starts bawling loudly. Aizawa thinks it's understandable, though. He has Shoto up and sits him on his chair. I'll be back in a minute, okay? Shoto nods, but Aizawa isn't. It takes him a good 15 minutes to calm Izuku down and pull Katsuki aside. Katsuki gets sent to sit by himself in home corner and sulks the whole time. Aizawa then makes sure all eyes are on him before being the sternest he's ever been with his class, drilling into their heads that being quirkless or having a quirk means nothing. He answers their questions patiently enough, but when he looks back to his chair some 30 minutes later, Shoto is already getting marched toward the door, Todoroki Endi's hand wrapped around his waist. Aizawa means to go after him, but he doesn't have the time. Shoto doesn't return for six weeks. Before Shoto returns, another problem arises. Not a problem, really, but Miss Chi leaves the daycare Aizawa's son, Hitoshi, goes to. It's not that big of a drama, except that it is. Hitoshi is bounced from daycare to daycare before clicking with Mrs. Chi. She's understanding of his shyness and wariness, as well as the cheekiness that gets him into trouble. She can handle Hitoshi as well as Aizawa and Yamada can, which is saying something. But now she's found a new, higher-paying job, and Hitoshi refuses to go to daycare. And when he's there, all he does is cry and brainwashes everyone that tries to get him to leave his corner. That has all his toys being taken away for a week, but Aizawa thinks he deserves it. Which leaves Aizawa in a predicament, and in the end, he enrolls Hitoshi in Little Heroes. It's only for five months before he starts school. And hopefully, under Aizawa's watchful eye, he'll stay in line. Hitoshi is wary at first, and tries to cling to his leg. Aizawa makes it very clear that this isn't a thing that he's going to be allowed, and so shoots him off. He sends him in Fumikage's direction, and that seems to work for a time. Dark Shadow then pulls on Hitoshi's hair, and Hitoshi brainwashes Katsuki to use his explosions to scare the bird away. Thus ends Fumikage and Hitoshi's friendship, and away go Hitoshi's toys again. He pouts over the dinner table, but even Yamada is unsympathetic, tapping his nose and telling him that he knows better than to use his quirk like that. Aizawa tries again with Denki, and that actually works, thank God. Denki is bright and welcoming, and is silly enough to make Hitoshi laugh. They enjoy their mornings together, drawing and building castles and playing hide-and-seek in the gardens. Aizawa does notice, however, that once Hanta, Mina, Ijiro, and Katsuki turn up, Hitoshi peels away. Denki doesn't even notice, but Aizawa knows it's not on purpose. The kid's easily distracted, and Hitoshi is so quiet he gets lost in the noise. It's at nap time a few days later that he hears a giggle. It's not so uncommon. Mucking up at rest time is always funny to five-year-olds. But it's Hitoshi laughing, and that's enough to make Aizawa surreptitiously seek out his son. He's not hard to find. In the back corner of the room, Hitoshi and Izuku are hiding under the blankets before popping out and giggling at each other. He isn't too surprised when Hitoshi tells Yamada over dinner that night that Izuku is his new best friend. 
The proverbial calm before the storm breaks when Shoto finally returns. His mother isn't dropping him off. It's his brother, Toya, pushing open the door to sidekicks. Aizawa's eyes narrow because it's hot out, and Toya is wearing not only pants, but a turtleneck that goes up to his chin and hangs past his fingertips. There's makeup on his face. It's not the best Aizawa has ever seen, and because of that, he glimpses some of the odd colors underneath and around his eye. His nose and mouth are covered by a face mask, and it could be a hygiene thing, but it could also very much not be. Shoto got burnt, is all Toya says, passing the boy over. Dad says he's well enough to come back. Toya stalks out before Aizawa can say anything else. Shoto makes a half-hearted attempt to reach for him before giving up, hand dropping to his side. Aizawa crouches down in front of him, and every part of him locks up when he sees Shoto's face. It had been hidden by his hair, but he can see it now, and it looks so, so awful. The burn covers a good portion of his left side, and still looks incredibly painful. Shoto? He doesn't know what else to say. Shoto stays quiet for the longest time before bursting into tears. He flings his arm around Aizawa's neck and sobs and sobs. Aizawa gets Neymari to cover for him for once and takes Shoto into the staff room. The boy is shaking terribly and whimpers keep escaping him. Who in their right mind thought Shoto was ready enough to return? And worst of all, how did this happen to him? Shoto just clings tighter. Eventually, though, he manages to talk. I hate him. Aizawa stiffens. He wants to ask, but he can't. He can't ask leading questions. It only ruins evidence later. I hate him, Shoto repeats, much more vehemently this time. He, he's the reason Mother's always crying. If I, if I didn't look like him, she, she wouldn't have... There's so much to unpack there, and Aizawa doesn't know what to do. He just rubs Shoto's back comfortingly, encouraging him to cry it out. Do you want to go home? Shoto shakes his head. I want Mother! Aizawa frowns. I can call her. She'll come and take you home. Mother's not home, Shoto screams, and the tears start all over again. He took her away. He took her away because she hurt me, but it was his fault. Nimuri comes in then, obviously having left Miss Sayumi for a minute, but there isn't anything they can do. Not really. Aizawa files a report, of course, based on what Shoto sold him, but he knows Endeavor's a top drink hero. He's also a pile of trash with a legal team. He's sure there's a story already waiting to be spun. With Shoto looking how he does, how could there not be? It takes until lunch for Shoto to stop crying. Aizawa brings him out to the eating area and everyone goes quiet. Not even Katsuki makes a comment, which means everyone in the room understands how serious this is. He ushers Shoto into a seat next to Izuku, on the opposite side of Hitoshi. Shoto's a little upset right now, he says to Izuku. Can I ask you to help me look after him? Make sure he has a friend. Izuku nods resolutely, reaching out and sliding a hand into Shoto's. Shoto blinks, but doesn't pull away. Toya comes back that afternoon and takes Shoto without a word. He comes every day after that, the only Todoroki old enough to pick up Shoto, and Aizawa can't help but notice one simple thing. He never sees an inch of Toya's skin. Things become a little more mundane after that. There's only three or so months left until Aizawa's class move on to elementary school, so they're much better behaved than when the year started. They've worked out his boundaries, and Aizawa's long since worked out all of theirs. A simple look is enough these days to stop any dangerous behavior. They've also matured a little. There's also pressure from school, which is ridiculous in Aizawa's opinion, but children like Katsuki, Momo, and Tenya in particular spend a good portion of playtime hunched over paper and scribbling down as many letters as they know. Aizawa knows Katsuki is the current winner, even more so because his parents are already drilling Japanese into him at home, and he's already starting those alphabets too. Personally, Aizawa thinks they're pushing too hard. Which is probably why Aizawa scrounges through the art supply shelves and pulls out several cans of shaving foam. He drops them in various places around the room, a few other kids slowly starting to pay attention. Izuka's eyes widen and he's already making for Aizawa's desk, hiding underneath with Shoto. Once everything is set up, Aizawa squirts a rather large amount of foam into his hand. He then rubs it right into Katsuki's cheek. The boy screams, I'll kill you! Katsuki yells, scrambling out of his chair and jumping for the bottle, but Aizawa just smirks, getting him again. As fast as ever, Katsuki's eyes dart to the side and he sees one of the cans. He's damn near bolting, snatching it up and running back towards Aizawa. Ijiro jumps in between, and that's noble, but Aizawa just gets him too. Ijiro's mouth drops open in betrayal before he starts laughing. That, it seems, is the last straw, and soon everyone is in on it. 
His kids are slipping and sliding across the floor as it grows more and more slippery. Foam is thrown this way and that, and even Tenya has given up trying to scold everyone. The game goes on for a good half hour, shrieks and laughter filling the room. When the cans are empty and there's nothing more to play with, Aizawa sends them all to their lockers to get new clothes. The kids change, and then he shoes them outside so he can clean up. They all peter out, and Aizawa gets them up from the storeroom. He starts them up before realizing he can hear something. Lifting his head, he frowns. Each one of his children are back in the room. They've grabbed wipes and paper towel from somewhere and are cleaning the room. Aizawa blinks. I told you to go outside. But Mr. Aizawa, me made the mess too, Hanta says. We want to help clean, Ochako adds. Cleaning can even be fun, Ijiro beams. Aizawa stares at them all before smiling against his will. And if he gives them all stickers when they're done, no one needs to know. Sidekicks decide they want to have pajama day and a movie as their class party. Sure, they're going to have graduation, which is stupid in Aizawa's mind. They're five, and this is daycare. But every year ends with a party. Pajama day was actually Hitoshi's idea, and Aizawa is more than a little proud that everyone in the room went with his son's suggestion. They're also keen for popcorn and a movie. The day arrives, and everyone comes bouncing in with smiles on their faces. Some children have gone the whole mile wearing not only pajamas, but dressing gowns and slippers, too. Yuka even brings a sleep mask. Most kids also have a pillow and their favorite toy tucked underneath each arm. Izuku and Katsuki come in with the exact same all-night plushie, making for Aizawa's first drama of the day. He has to pull Katsuki aside when he gets annoyed that he and Izuku have the same toy. And he also has to label each toy so they won't get mixed up. Izuku gets teary-eyed there, but Aizawa promises he's only going to write on the tag. Aizawa will also admit that he's not too surprised when Shoto gets shoved in the door, literally, dressed in normal clothes and not an accessory in sight. Endeavor's footsteps are heavy in the hallway, and Aizawa sighs. He takes Shoto's hand and leads him outside, hating how the boy's face falls more and more at seeing everyone else dressed up. Hitoshi chooses that moment to tug his spare hand, and Aizawa is going to kindly ask him to leave when Hitoshi signs to him. This isn't a surprise, they all know sign. Yamada thought it very important, but Hitoshi doesn't sign at daycare. Momo make clothes? is what he asks, gaze briefly flicking towards Shoto, who just looks confused. Aizawa shakes his head. No quirks at kindy. Momo make clothes. Hitoshi, no, stop. Hitoshi stamps his foot, of all things. Quirks are for doing good. Stop Shoto being sad. Mr. Aizawa? Shoto asks, but Aizawa is looking at Hitoshi once more before sighing, crouching down to Shoto's level. Would you like to dress up too? Shoto jumps, hands clutching his top subconsciously. Father didn't... I... Do you want to? Hitoshi presses. Shoto nods just once, pointing at Izuku and Katsuki. All night pajamas, Aizawa guesses, which gets him another nod. Aizawa very quietly calls Momo over and asks her if she can make Shoto something to wear. He promises he'll tell her parents and says she won't get in any trouble. Momo beams, making all night pajamas that are just the right size. She then also makes the same plush toy Izuku and Katsuki have. Aizawa sighs, and scrawls a name on that one, too. He releases the children, but not without a hug and a thank you to Hitoshi. Hitoshi just shrugs, though he smiles when Izuku screams at seeing Shoto's pajamas. Shoto doesn't get a say before Izuku is taking his hands and jumping up and down, stumbling as he tries to convey just how much he loves them. Aizawa also thinks it's worth it to see Endeavor's face that afternoon. He gets to the door before Enji can call for Shoto, pasting a fake smile on his face. We noticed Shoto wasn't dressed up today. You should have received the email. My son had a spare pair, though, and was happy to share. Please wash and return them. Enji's expression turns to one of fury, but Aizawa is unmoved, waving Shoto over and taking his shoulders in his hands. Make sure to bring Hitoshi's pajamas back, okay? Shoto is thankfully clever enough to understand. He nods. Thank you, he mutters as he grabs his backpack and slips it on. Aizawa sees them out with a wave. He's never felt better about himself. Graduation rolls around just like that. Before he knows it, it's been a year and these children are off to school. He's seen their school enrollment forms and knows that most of them will be split up, which is a shame. Aizawa knows they'll make new friends, but it's still a little sad. He's sticking the last pictures up on the wall when the door opens. Expecting it to be Miss Ayumi, Aizawa doesn't pay it any mind. He then feels a soft hand on his waist and looks down to find Izuku there. He's lost a tooth sometime over the weekend and is smiling through the gap proudly. 
He also has what looks like a card and a present in his hands. You're early, Aizawa says as he accepts the gifts. Better early than late, Izuku informs him, bouncing up and down on his toes. He then looks around the room in wonder. Do you need help, Mr. Aizawa? Aizawa shakes his head, ruffling the kid's hair. That's all right, Izuku. His eyes flick up. Why don't you help your mom find the best seat? Izuku's eyes light up, and he does just that, guiding Midoriya Inko into the seat nearest the front and jumping into her lap before explaining everything he can see. Inko listens with the patience of the saint. After that, more and more families trickle in. Embarrassingly, it's Yamada who's the last parent, Aizawa narrowing his eyes at him. Yamada holds up his hands in surrender, scooping up Hitoshi, who suddenly looks uncomfortable at the number of people in the room. Aizawa welcomes everyone and plays some slap-together slideshow that makes the parents coo, even though it's nothing too special. Some even wipe away tears. When it's done, Miss Sayumi flicks the lights back on, and Aizawa announces he's going to hand out the graduation certificates. Graduation certificates. Oi, Mr. Aizawa! Katsuki yells, his mom and dad pulling on his shirt for all the good it does. He's in a tie and vest, which has Aizawa quirking up an eyebrow. Fancy. Who came first? This earns a few laughs. Aizawa's shaking his head. It's not like that, Katsuki. If you're going to school next year, you graduate. Katsuki flumps down at that, clearly unimpressed. To make matters worse, the first name on the list is Aizawa Hitoshi, which is so embarrassing. He gets a few more laughs, and there's some awes when Hitoshi absolutely will not come to the front. Yamada will, though, and Aizawa's ready to go home right then. He steals himself somehow and keeps reading the names out. Mina pokes her tongue out at getting hers before Katsuki, who seethes until his name is called. Izuku, like Hitoshi, will not come up, no matter how much his mother tries. Inko gets quite flustered, and Aizawa just goes to Izuku instead, handing over the certificate and getting a whispered thank you in response. It's as he's looking through the names of children to go that he realizes someone very important is not there. As if on cue, screaming comes from the hallway outside. No! No! I don't want to! Several adults wince, and Aizawa doesn't blame them. Tantrums are never fun. It is, however, the second time he's ever heard this child raise their voice. To his complete non-surprise, the door is flung open without preamble, and Toya drags in a kicking Todorogi Shoto. There, Toya says in what is obviously exasperation. I told you everyone is here. Now go sit down. No! Screams Shoto once more, and he's a good kid, but the looks he's getting? Before Aizawa can intervene, Toya clearly isn't going to. Shoto adds, Cause graduation means I'm going to school, and that means no more Mr. Aizawa! Aizawa freezes in shock, and then legitimately jumps when Izuku starts sniffling as well. Ochako is next to start, and once she starts, well, Ijiro and Mina join in. Aizawa wants to bury himself in shame, but he can't because Hitoshi, in a sudden burst of confidence, sprints across the room and hugs him. The rest of his class follow, and Aizawa is nearly knocked over. He hugs them all back, though, doing his best to ignore all the phones he sees pointed his way. There will be a hundred copies of this, no doubt. Everyone, Aizawa says softly, but in a tone that brings them all up. We've had a lot of fun this year, but you're going to have more fun next year, all right? And if you ever need me, I'm going to be here. Promise? Momo asks, hands twisting together. Promise, he says, before shooing them. Now go, we're not finished, and now everything's a mess. His class laugh good-naturedly at his fake scowl, skittering back to their seats. Shoto is finally content to come inside, though he burrows into Toy's lap. He barely nabs his certificate before diving right back in. His brother rolls his eyes, but Aizawa also catches them snapping a selfie a few minutes later. And just like that, it's over. Parents bombard him for photos with their kids, and he obliges, he and Miss Ayumi never wanting to smile again by the time they're done. There's a small pile of gifts on Aizawa's desk when he goes to leave, and leaning against the wall is a card. On the front is a photo of his class doing goofy faces. On the back is every child's handprint. And inside is a message written by Miss Ayumi on behalf of his kids. But each and every one of them have written their name in their wonky backwards ease and all handwriting. Aizawa isn't crying when he flips off the lights, but his eyes are definitely wet. He'll never have a class like them again, he's sure of it. He isn't even sure he wants to. Ten years pass, and then Karma must be some sort of cosmic prankster, because when Aizawa opens the door to Class 1A at UA High School, a teaching position he's had for three years, he's met with twenty curious faces, and he recognizes each and every one. This was Class 1 Daycare, written by T and Tumblr, recorded by Star1412.
If you have a fanfic you'd like me to record, send me a link and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for listening.